until then, I'm just going to pass it off to the Toastmaster, who is Brad Beck. A Toastmaster in shorts. <laughs> In a Hawaiian well, shirt. my my attire is not all up to being a Toastmaster simply because I'm working a booth today at the Longmont Pride Festival, and we're going to be there with the wonderful Miss Maureen Denig and several other people talking about liberty today. So, when we think about the true test of leadership, the question I have for you all this morning is this: When you think of that word leadership, who do you think about? Call out the names: Russ, Reagan, Reagan, Maureen. Gorbachev. Gorbachev. Interesting choice. Stephen. Jefferson. Jefferson. David. Churchill. Good choice. Chester Nimitz. Chester. Ah, very good. <laughs> Chesty. Charlie. Patton. Patton. Very good. Michael. Ass. <laughs> We're not Ass. drinking beer yet. It's too early. <laughs> Russ. Jefferson. Jefferson. All well, great choices. What's that? I didn't even hear the question. So when you think of leadership, that word, what do you? What comes to your mind? Who comes to your mind? Oh, yeah, Patton. Patton, good choices. All great leaders. They all have a lot of commonality. They, a lot of them have virtues that we would all agree are, are good signs of a leader. But when I think of leadership first, I think of my mom and dad. Think about the first people who you follow. Kind of like that image of a duck and its ducklings and going and following and doing. Those were our first leaders. Those were our first impressions. And as you got older, you had different impressions. You were influenced by friends, by early teachers. They were your leaders. Perhaps a minister or a pastor or a rabbi. It could have been a variety of people. And today when we think of leaders, we think of those people usually in politics and very rarely women. Isn't that interesting? So when we think about leadership today, the true test of leadership, I think about those actions that people do rather than the virtues. Now, virtue is important, but I think it's the actions that they take in a positive, good, and fostering way that we look up to and say, that's a good individual. And to me, there are good leaders and bad leaders. Of course, Hitler was a bad leader, but he was a leader. Stalin was a leader, but he was a bad leader. And so it's interesting how we look at leadership, the good and the bad, and there could be a case that in our country today, our opposition party is leading us down a path that takes us right to socialism. And, you know, Charlie and I had a discussion earlier about uh, Boulder County and, and the differences with how people approach public policy. And the people on the left tend to say, we know better, as opposed to each of us in the room who say, we want to make our own individual choices. We're the leaders of ourselves. We own ourselves by right. And by owning ourselves by right, we have the ability to make the decisions and to lead our own lives. So today, as you go along, think about leadership a little bit differently. And I'm sure we'll be looking forward to our table topics, how that will uh, interact with speaking off the cuff. And I'm sure, uh, I think Mike has that challenge today, so we'll look forward to hearing about it. As we go into the actual meeting, I'd like to have the folks that have roles introduce themselves, give them a moment or two to talk about their roles and introduce their team. And our general evaluator today is Mr. Stephen Bailey. So, Stephen, would you come up and share that with us? Continuing on with our meeting, a great Greek soldier, Zephion, once said, a leader is best when people barely know he exists. When his work is done, his aim fulfilled, they say, we did it ourselves. Interesting quote on leadership. One of the leaders of our club is Mr. Russ Farmer. And Russ, Russell's going to be doing his speech, third project, Get to the Point in the Competent Communicator. And his evaluator today is Mr. Dave Walden. Dave, will you share with us? Reminds me of when he was my coach in Little League. And we were in the World Series in our little league. And it was interesting because after the game, we had lost by one run. Two kids, who were, I happen to know, came up and said, Mr. Beck, congratulations. Uh, great game, but, you know, we won. You lost, you know. My dad said, where were you guys at? And they said, well, we were on the bench. We weren't good enough to play. 
to your point, you know, is it about fun, learning, skill set? Winning is important, but it has to be a win-win, and I agree with you. So thank you for jogging that memory and talking about the true test of leadership, how we look at things. Take a moment to fill out your forms for Russell. This is from somebody who is a well-known retailer. Started out with a small five-and-dime store. And he said, outstanding leaders go out of their way to boost the self-esteem of their personnel. If people believe in themselves, it's amazing what they can accomplish. That's from Sam Walton of Walmart, right? Our next speaker is Charlie Wynn, and his evaluator is Dave Walton. Dave, will you share with us Charlie's goals? Very good quote about courage. He said, courage is rightly esteemed the first of human qualities because it is the quality which guarantees all others courage. And with that, I have now the courage to turn over the lectern to our esteemed Toastmaster who will lead us in our table topics, which is Mr. Michael Shelton. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll turn it back over to our Toastmaster, Brad Beck. Thank you, Thank everybody. Thank you, Mr. Shelton. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mike and Ann. Very thoughtful looking. Good series of questions. Before we go to the timekeeper, I'll share another one of the uh, ideas of leadership. One is character. Abraham Lincoln said, character is like a tree and reputation like a shadow. The shadow is what we think of it. The tree is the real thing. Courage and character. Ted, would you share with us the time on our volunteers? Wow. Let's share a couple closing thoughts as your Toastmaster on this topic of the true test of leadership. I have a friend who has an idea about how he wants to change the world. And he ran for the Colorado House, Don Beasley. And his thought is, I want to change the world. That's Don's model. When I talked to Shari Williams, the executive director of Leadership Program of the Rockies, she's building the Army for Freedom. Very clear, concise statements of purpose. When I went through the Leadership Program of the Rockies, Shari said in my closing exit interview, Brad, what are you going to do with the time and energy that you invested in this program. And I said, I'll start a Toastmasters Club because I want to help people speak more effectively. We all as leaders don't have to be that grandiose George Patton or a president, a Lincoln or a Jefferson, but in our own ways can be influencers in our sphere of friends and family and acquaintances. So I'm going to throw out some words that I think are important <clears throat> leadership, honor, humility, responsibility, justice, perseverance, contribution, respect, integrity, and self-governance. All of these are important in a leader. They're virtues that we all look at and say those are good and I'll follow that person. And today I think one of the problems we have is people don't understand that virtues, when we have a good leader, we don't stand behind them. We're waiting for somebody to be out in front. And the question is, leaders need people to follow them. And are each of us going to follow those people that exhibit these virtues? Carl Sagan, the astronomer, and I had the good fortune of meeting Mr. Sagan once when I worked at KMBC as an intern. He was sitting in the makeup room. He hated makeup, but they make everybody put up makeup. And he's sitting there in the chair, and I happened to see the roster. And the roster said Carl Sagan. So I went out and bought his book at the time, Cosmic Connection. For those of us in the 70s, we remember that book. And while I'm asking him to sign the book, Johnny Carson walked into the room. In fact, he was at the door, and I could not leave. So imagine you're a young person in their early 20s, and there is Carl Sagan and Johnny Carson. And Carson was a big astronomy fan. And they're talking about astronomy. And here I am like a little fly on the wall. Amazing conversation. But one of the things he said then, and I'll want to share with you now, he talked about imagination. Imagination will often carry us to the worlds that never were. But without it, we'll go nowhere. <laughs> so 
So as a leader, we need leaders who are imaginative. And with that, I'll ask now for our vote for, let's say, best table topics. <laughs>